I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and in keeping with our Valentine's Day theme we've had this week, feeling of love in the air, um, we have a special guest on, and this is a new thing for America Trends. I don't think we've had this type of specialist on the show before. She is a clinical sexologist, and her website is radicalsexologist.com, at radicalsexologist. Dr. Lori Davis, welcome to America Trends. Hello, Mary. I'm so happy to be here on I'm, Valentine's Day, no less. I'm, I'm very happy to welcome you to the show and to, you know, this is an interesting topic because I, you know, in some of your notes, it talks about how the word sex, sex and, you know, it's kind of taboo to talk about and people maybe shy away from this subject, but it's something that everyone probably has on their minds. And so it's something that we need to become a little bit more comfortable talking about and talking about it more in terms of intimacy and pleasure as a whole so that we can be happier human beings. Is that kind of where you fit into this this world? You, you stole my thunder, Mary. No, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's exactly it. That, that's ex exactly why I'm so happy to be here and that, that you're bringing this onto the show. Well, yeah. you know, we, we have a lot of entrepreneurs, small business owners that watch the show. Um, and I know, you know, we talk a lot about this whole culture right now of quiet quitting and, and there's just so much change going on and frustrations with the world, be it politically or whatever it may be. Um, so, you know, that's probably, as you were probably seeing, filtering into the bedroom and in people's personal lives. Is that what you're you're seeing? Oh, yeah, 100 yeah. percent. You know, I see people in my practice for all kinds of things, you know, all kinds of sexual concerns. But fundamentally, people are just can feel really stuck in their sex lives. And when we kind of tune into that and, and try to see what's going on, one of the first themes that emerges is that people are just overworked. You know, they're stressed out, they're tired to the bone, they're burnt out, and that's really having a huge impact on their sex life. And so I spend a lot of time in my work talking about, uh, in my work, talking about people's work. And sometimes I can feel more like a work coach than a sex coach because it does just have such a big impact on our sex lives. Yeah, you know, I think probably people would not see the connection right off the bat. But as you're talking about it, it just makes a lot of sense um, because yeah. it's hard to check the feelings from work or the bad day or whatever is maybe happening at the door, right? A lot of times it bleeds into the home and that's just natural. So, but there's gotta be ways in which I'm sure that's, you know, what you work on with people. But first I wanna talk uh, about your background. You were a doctor of yep. nursing, right? That's right. And then you had even expertise in a certified sex counselor. So you that's kind right. of merged these two professions and you now work with women and their partners to help them get out of maybe a rut and help them improve their sex lives. And probably in turn, which might help their work life because if they're happy there, they're gonna be happier at work probably. But tell me how you, you know, um, so people come to you and then you work with just the women or the couples together. So I work with people of all genders. My work did start with women. Um, my work here started when I met a series of women who were having problems in sex and they just frankly were being ignored by the medical profession. And, you know, I had one of those like light bulb aha moments, like a cartoon light bulb over my head where I thought, you know what, women deserve better. And, you know, I can do better by them. I had had my own sexual journey, had learned so much, but, you know, some of that is just really simple messages that were so healing around learning that I wasn't alone, right? That I wasn't the only one, I wasn't broken and that what I was going through really mattered. And that's the kind of messages I wanted to bring to women, but to also bring to them the very best that medicine had to offer uh, to help them live the sex life that they, that they wanted. I've combined that with the counseling, like you said, so that we can really offer something holistic for you know, mind, heart, soul, body, uh, so that you can show up in your sex life just the way you're wanting to. Um, yeah, well, you know, it occurs to me that women over the past, I don't know how many years, 30, 40 years, have really taken, you know, they're also leaders in the workplace, also raising a family, a lot of times pulled in a lot of different directions, and then also the 
notion that they're wearing matching bra and panties all the time and maybe garters <laughs> and they've got to keep up this look for yeah. whatever reason. Um, and that's probably not accurate or even doable, you know? So I, I don't know. Do you see that kind of frustration in women? That is, I can't be all things to all the people. I do see that. I mean, that's a huge refrain, right? And then when we feel like sex is just another thing that we have to do for someone else, right? It just becomes an obligation. It becomes another thing that we've got on our to-do list, which is already too heavy, you know? And, and I don't want to minimize the fact that, you know, we have too much on our plates at home and at work. And um, I don't want to minimize that at all, but I know that in my work, sometimes we can get a little stuck thinking that we have to make work perfect before we can make sex perfect. Um, and I, I really want to offer the radical suggestion to folks that if we turn our mind towards sexuality, that maybe that can be the engine that can get us unstuck, right? Get us turned on, get the engine unstuck um, so that we can make the changes that we need in the rest of our lives to live the overall life that we want. So the real, the real um, perspective shift, I think, for women is considering that maybe sex is part of self-care. And I think that can be a really revolutionary concept. Hmm. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, you know, what about your practice is the radical part of it? But I think you just touched upon that. It's the the, the, the paradigm shift or the mental perception, the, the way we perceive sex has to completely change um, and be radicalized, right, from, yeah. from the, the previous notions. Um, and so how do you help? What are some tips? We have about another minute or so. How, what are some tips that you can share here? that might help with overall intimacy and, you know, maybe not just making it like the way we used to think. Yeah, I think really taking in that notion to heart, really questioning, huh, where sex is self-care. If sex was self-care, what would my sex look like? What would my relationship with my partner look like? Right, and sometimes we can get a little stuck when we start to think that way because there's so much baggage attached to the word sex. So the first thing I have people do is just throw out the word sex altogether and call it something else. And the suggestion I have around that is maybe you call it play. Like, what would it look like if we were getting together with our partners for self-care, for self-care through play? Uh -huh. um, and then I encourage people to throw out the, they throw out the word sex and they throw out the, their sexual script and they really just show up with their partner and figure out what each of them want, right? How do you want to be touched right now? How would you like to be touched right now? And we really start to understand through all of that, that there is something that we really truly so, want, yeah. that it matters and that we can ask for it and that we can even get it. Well, and I so love that you're, you're bringing this to the world. Dr. Lori yeah. Davis, clinical sexologist. You can find her at radicalsexologist.com or at radicalsexologist on Instagram and social media. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Lori. I really have enjoyed our conversation. And uh, everyone at home, thank you so much for 